Hey everybody, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. It is episode 60, 60 of the Halls of Ardenville Mega Dungeon by Richard Barton using the old school essential system by Gavin Norman. We are the most criminally underwatched actual play show on the internet, so please spread the word and like and subscribe if you possibly can. Helps us a lot. So we are, uh, yeah, episode 60. We got a full house, which is amazing. Mike is back. Oh, yeah. Uh, my name is John. I am the referee. And going around the horn, we have. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm playing Darius Vile, the third level assassin. <laughs> I'm, I'm David, and I'm playing Mysophase, the first level magic user. We got to fix that, man. We got to fix that. Uh, I'm, I technically uh, should uh, be second level, but we haven't had <laughs> that we'll, up yet. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get you there. We'll get you there, buddy. Uh, my name is Matt. I play Avaricio, the left hand of Lysion, uh sixth level cleric. And one-handed wonder. Hi, everybody. I'm Ted. I'm playing Mortis J. Gobliano. Guaranteed fresh delivery in 20 minutes or less, or it's free. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Just okay. Make, make <laughs> yeah, what exactly do you deliver? <laughs> Ted will be at the local the comedy Benjis. club. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... It is, uh, we got a full party. So we have three out of the four members of the party are actually high enough to level. Um, that would be Darius, Mizophase, and Mort uh, actually are high enough all to uh -huh. go up a level. So, um, uh, Elizabeth is too. Not and, and Elizabeth. So there you go. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, they desperately need to get some rest if they want to gain some more power. So. All right. Last we left them in episode 59, major, major developments. They have successfully done their back end heist of the vault hoard. All of the treasure has been removed from the vault. Um, however, the carrying is um, a, bit, a bit more of a quandary involving a great deal of math and figuring out encumbrance slots and things like that. However, they did that off. They did it partly in the ep end of episode 59 and uh, hammered it down on the off time between episodes. We've had two weeks to figure it out. So it took two weeks. It took every day of those two weeks. <laughs> yes. Uh, Matt did an excellent job of corralling everybody and figuring out all the math and doing a table and all that kind of good stuff. And we have the final numbers. So Matt, why don't you just give us, a, don't have to go nitty gritty, but just give us a brief overview of how much Solidi is being carried and uh, what is being left on the ground in the tunnel floor. Okay. Okay. We have, we've decided to um, stay with a, a good deal of the party combat ready in case there's trouble. So we're not fully maxed out. We're gonna leave uh, some on the, on the ground, just, just there taunting us. But um, we have, uh, with our 20 goblin uh, retinue, um, uh, we're gonna uh, uh, politely ask Estelle for a little help, uh, compensate her for her trouble. Um, but with all of us uh, loaded, and we're still at 90 uh, feet of speed, so we're still fairly brisk, uh, we are carrying a total of 5,350 solidi, wow. which each one of those is times 10 worth its weight in current gold. So that's 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 a, that's a quite, a, quite a haul. That's a big scratch. And um, uh, the uh, total amount that was in the vault before we started was 6,161. And so that means we're leaving on the ground 811 gold solidi just on the right. ground in that collapsed hallway. Right. So uh, they, they got the vast majority of it, which is pretty awesome. So they're looking at a potential haul of 50 uh, of uh, 53,500 gold pieces, um, which is also that equivalent in possible XP by whoever brings it back to a safe haven. So um, a lot a lot riding on this. The way they basically worked it out, as um, Matt sort of said, is that basically half the goblins are, are fully loaded and the other half, uh, 10, are going to uh, be carrying a small sack and, and have, a, have a weapon in hand. Um, so... That's basically the deal. So um, we've taken enough to actually fill out everyone's slots so that they are um, at the maximum that allows them to move at an exploration rate of 90. If any, Basically, if anyone takes anything more, you're always bound by the slowest member of your party. Um, so they would immediately drop to 60 if they decide to carry anything else. Um, it is right now the 4th of Jelenius. It is 840 in the morning. That's 20 minutes away from the projected arrival of the Wine Dark cohort in force to uh, come and haul out all of the treasure that is no longer there. 
Um, so you know that they, uh, judging by the speed of those oxen and what it takes to get across the city, they are already en route. They are coming. Uh, one uh, uh, one vanguard member of the Wyandotte cohort did manage to escape your vengeance during the heist. You didn't see him. He noticed that something was amiss, and that's when you collapsed the tunnel. So um, it was likely that he was probably on watch. Uh, like it was his watch up up at the top. Uh, the alarm triggered. Uh, Everisius' alarm triggered. Um, and uh, you noticed him or heard him, and then, but just be aware that that guy is still out there. Uh, Cod's wallet met his very just end at the end of Mort's Blade. Um, and Estelle, who was basically in charge of the negotiations with Krostonistrix, the great green dragon, and um, and heading up this vanguard of the Windark cohort, is now your prisoner and in tow. So she is bound, um, her hands. Uh, you have told us that you have. Uh, did, you, did you gag her? Are you worried about spell casting there? Probably not, right? Not, not with the hands, and because we, we also took her uh, her holy symbol, and just so that she wasn't aware of all this like coin business going along, we have uh, blindfolded her also, just so right. just kind of keep her in the literal dark. So, as far as her gear, I just wanted to know what exactly you took from her. So she has the following. Let me know if you leave any of this on her, um, uh, and if you don't, you definitely have to account for where it goes because you have very very tight slot. Um, ability right now. She's wearing chainmail and shield and carrying a shield. Uh, she has a uh, a beautiful looking mace, a lovely looking alabaster staff that appears to be of a Thorking god, not her own god, um, and two potions. One of which she was. Uh, it looked like she was reaching for those potions before you managed to uh, sick the goblins on her. Okay, so I, I accounted for um, uh, Avaricios holding her her uh, mace. And that staff. Yeah. And um, I do have a belt pouch. I wasn't sure exactly how many potions could fit in a belt pouch. It, that was one thing I was a little. It, it's all, anything in a belt pouch goes under equipped items and one potion is one slot. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't have room for those potions unless we want to do something else. I didn't account for those. Her hands are tied. She can. We can leave have the potion on her. Yeah. It's not like she's yeah. going to okay. drink one. Yeah, but and the, you all staff and the mace, you know, need to be taken away from her. Yeah, for now. Av, Av has Av has those. He can give I'm them back. Sorry, there. I just want to say that if we finally have found a magical blunt weapon, and we return it to her, you guys are crazy. Full <laughs> 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 dungeon, man. It does. It does. It does really hurt. But I, you know, I I just I don't think Avrisos is like a. A, a, a thief. I don't think he's going to steal that from her. That's crazy. I don't think he can do it. Okay. I just don't think he can do it. He wants it. He wants it real bad. <laughs> I just don't think he can do it. All right. So the uh, light situation, I, I believe, is also Avaricios with the holy symbol with continual light. Is that correct? Correct. And, yes. And, and you're basically going to stay back into the middle of the group so that Mort and the goblins can use infravision. Yeah, that's yep. our typical. That, that here? Our, yeah. Okay, cool. And last thing we just should note for the audience as well, I believe that, once again, Avaricios, I believe you, I can't remember the the form factor it took, but you marked the vault with a W again. Is that correct? I, I, I did leave a, a W on a note inside the vault. W note. Okay, cool. All right. So I think that gets us all caught up. So it is... Um, you're in the, you're basically at the bottom of that cave, uh, that most recently caved in, um, part of the tunnel, right. That leads directly up into the, uh, vault, but that no is no longer accessible unless you took a lot of time to try to, uh, uh, to, uh, sift through, you know, to break through your, um, cave in. So, um, it's dark. You have the, uh, the continual light out. The goblins are ecstatic. They're basically all worshiping Mort at this point. Um, especially after what he did to Codswallop and they are looking, gleefully at all of you for just give them the word and they will take care of Estelle with extreme prejudice. Like they, they, like the, they got that sort of like the bloodthirst up in them. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, the, the, you know. My lads, now is not the time for blood, but now is the time for caution. Let us go forth with our riches that we may arrive at the king in good order. Do not distract yourselves, young men. Very good, both. No problem, you know. All right, so they uh, they shoulder their their weapons and they got their loot and you guys are just hauling like every step you take you're like jingle jangling. Um, uh, it will <laughs> cause it will cause a problem uh, because it's just impossible to hide the sound of that much coin moving moving through corridors. So just be aware. 
Okay, so uh, your plan is to retrace your steps back to the triangular room and then uh, head southeast and get into Plunger Town again. Um, and that way, uh, making a straight shot for the tele the uh, Plunger Pyramid, right? And getting back to the Debouche. That is the overall plan, right? Just overall, right? Yes. Okay, so here's the deal with, um, as far as movement go, let's uh, switch over to Miro here so people can kind of get a gander at the scale of what we're looking at here. These This is a 50 foot, each, each square is 50 feet, be aware. They are moving at 90 right now. So if you are, um, if you are moving at 90, you're going to be doing about two squares per turn. That's giving you a little extra um, uh, to make it easy, 100 feet, 100 feet per turn. Okay, the floating disc has has been decided has not been cast yet because it doesn't last that or you would it lasts six turns but you wouldn't get that far on this map with it, um, so that's going to be like a last resort I suppose. Uh, Correct. So you're moving two squares per turn. The time is not so much of a thing right now because there's no way that Cross and Nisrex can really get to you. Um, you will definitely miss whatever the fallout of that will be when Cross and Nisrex finds out or when the Wine Dark finds out that there's nothing in the vault. And then Cross, Cross and Nister X finds out that the Wine Dark isn't coming up with anything. God help those men. Um, It'll be fine, John. <laughs> It'll be fine. They're trying to talk the way out of it. So he I do have a, work. a proposition for you. There, uh, This is by the rules here. So moving at 90 is assuming careful dungeon exploration through unknown territory, trying to be careful and stealthy. All of these paths that you're about to take are all are paths that you have already taken. If you are willing to forego stealth, um, uh, you know, uh, telegraphing trap presence and all that kind of stuff because of the fact that you've moved through here before, you can move three times as fast. So mm -hmm. I've already calculated that out should you wish to do it. If you're moving three times as fast, you're actually moving at a rate of 270 and you would be moving five squares per turn. If we are doing that, how does it, like, I understand we won't be going stealthy and we won't be looking for traps. How does it change um, our response to an encounter? Like, if we should come around the corner and there's a, a band of, you know, troglodytes there. If So it, it, it works like this. If 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 um, it would work like normal surprise unless the enemies are planning on ambushing you, in which case they would automatically ambush you. Because we're not there's being careful and listening and looking. That's correct. Right. Okay. I would imagine. I would imagine also that if we were running that fast, we would sound kind of like Santa's reindeer with all yeah. of those coins. Just like if we're running, and, like. And that's to be gonna... clear, you're not like running. You would just be moving normally without really having much of a care in the world, sort of thing, right? The the, uh, the normal movement exploration is like extremely slow. If you actually kind of parse out like what that actually means, a ninety foot movement rate is like really slow. Um, right. So it's uh, up to you guys. Uh, speed versus caution. Personally, guys, I don't, I don't know what the advantage is to going fast, right? Like, I mean, whatever happens upstairs is happening regardless of us. I almost feel like the longer we take down here, the better. I I would argue we should go faster with our Mort and the goblins out in the vanguard, and because the sooner and farther we are away from that tunnel, uh, if the one because that that scout probably will work out what's happened with the tunnel there. The whole Roanoke thing is only going to go so far. Whole company of wine dark shows up with pickaxes and start digging. I'd like to be very far away because they're going to move at 90 down there because they haven't been down here before, we assume. Matt. If they go down. There's another thing, and David had pointed this out over the, over the last week, is that we think that Garalad might be tied up still on the surface. We saw him on our way down, yeah. starting some kind of interaction with those scholars uh, up above. He might still be tied up in there. The longer we take, the more chance there is of him. And we think it was Cisco, right? Yeah, we've got um, those two figures that were walking that you guys saw from the pyramid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So Agreed. the longer we take, the the greater chance of him being there. Uh, maybe there's maybe there's a, a a compromise. Maybe in the long tunnels where there aren't any intersections, maybe we we book it down those. But when we slow down, when there's an intersection where we can't see what's coming around the corner, I like that. I, I'm down for that. Okay, so you're moving slow at first. Is that what I'm hearing? No, moving no. fast at first. Moving fast. Like in, 
Okay. And, yeah, and anywhere that long, the intersection, we slow down. But between that first right turn and that first left turn, that's, you know, basically just one long tunnel. We can just book down that. Okay. And, yeah, exactly. All right. And as, as we get started, I'm going to go tuck that kid in, and I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Matt's, Matt's tucking in a kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you begin your long crawl back through the halls. Um, you haven't, uh, you actually recognize it pretty, uh, I, what am I trying to say? You're, you're very comfortable here in this spot because you haven't actually been up in the vault for that long. Um, so you're, you kind of uh, jingle jangle your way back and you're just like, hi, ho, and all the goblins are like, yes, Richard, let's go. And you um, book it. Back towards I want to get the goblins to march in uh, two by two formation uh, in in step left left <laughs> left right left. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, don't mind me at all. Uh, not a big deal die. whatsoever. <laughs> um, okay, so you make your way to the first T intersection there, and you immediately break to the uh, to the east um, after going down for a little bit uh, further down underground, and it straightens out for a while, and you. Uh, you kind of hook around that U a little bit, and as it starts to straighten out, you start to slowly go up um, to the southeast. And you guys are right around, um, if you can see, like right around here? Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, at that point, it is uh, 9, 10 a.m., and uh, just I'm just locating you right there as I do my next thing. Don't worry about it at all. Don't sweat it. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, okay. So another turn goes by by the time that you reach the uh, next T intersection there. Okay. You have not right. ventured to the southeast. Uh, you are not going anywhere new. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. But unless you guys want. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, let me just check. I don't mind me. Okay. Uh, that's a one, two, three. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Need to make up uh, some ten, goblin marching songs. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four. Okay. That's 10 a.m. Okay, like by the time you get to the, um, by the time you get to the triangular room, it is now 10, 20. Okay. And you, uh, you're, you're not, you're going as fast as you possibly can. And, uh, you have yet to encounter anything that seems to be, uh, barring your passage. Do you no want to do bit. anything in the triangular room? Well, I, I'm just curious though, John, I don't, I don't know how far underground we actually are, but do we hear any like crashing, roaring screams or anything like that from the surface above us? You, you do not know. <laughs> okay. Which right, thing if you it feels a little warm in here. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe we should move through the triangle room a little more cautiously just because it's a, probably a kind of a local nexus. Juncture. I agree. I also recall where we noted more rats. It's because we heard stuff down the yeah. hall. So we probably should not be storming through that section. So maybe we move at a slower pace from the triangle room to the... Uh, Oh wait, I screwed up. Uh, that first, that first area that opens up that I'm pointing at. Yeah, I yeah, remember. I'd, the, I'd buy that. There were, yeah, there were uh, there was like pit traps in there. I think with a spider, right? Pit traps too. Yeah. Oh so yeah. Gonna, yeah. So starting at the triangle room, maybe we go back down to ninety, John. I'm thinking that makes yeah. sense. Okay, I actually totally miscalculated the time. Um, you're because you're moving I so wonder. fast. It's actually nine twenty. Nine twenty. Not ten twenty. Hey, that's a six um, minute mile, baby. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry. What did you say after? Uh, after you leave so, the uh, triangle room, we're going to go back to the triangle room. We're going to drop the speed down to like 90. And then back, back from here 90. on out, we're probably going to slow it down. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see. Because uh, there's definitely some mischief ahead. Are we also, John, are we leaving any discernible <laughs> tracks with this party going through these tunnels? I remember you describing them as being pretty bare, but with scree like on the corners, like on the edges. Yeah. But there's a lot um, of you. I mean, there's definitely going to be some like j basically just signs of passage. You know what I mean? No, no footprints that, that could be traced. That in the triangle room to like which tunnel we decide to go down. If you take time. 
What do you guys think? Is that worth it? If the wine dark is down here, like tracking us down. Remember, guys, mercen- <laughs> mercenaries in general will not go into a dungeon, right? I'm not too worried about that. I, think we'll we put a lot of this- <clears throat> I would normally not be this reckless, but yeah, I think if yeah. we want to go through Plunger Town, time is really okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. close I agree. at this point uh john as as we slow down and we're not hustling so much um mort would uh like to start to speak to estelle uh, yeah. to inquire you know uh you know how are you feeling my apologies that this is necessary um you know fair estelle it, it saddens me that this has been uh, the way our relationship has has ended up, I, I hope that there is some way that we can correct such animosity between us. This is this is uh, not how I would have our our friendship continue. Uh, <laughs> she's she's pretty beat up, um, and she's uh, thoroughly defeated. Her hair is like hanging lank in her face. Um, yeah. it was, it was tied up at like, like strands are sort of like in her face and she's all, you know, uh, bruised and, um, uh, dirty from her, uh, fall down the pit. Um, and she's speaking to the person who did that to her. So yes, she's not, indeed. she is, <laughs> she, she is not very, she's not very keen. She sort of glowers up at you, not with hatred, but just with like total defeat and, um, down. she glowers yeah. down at me. Glowers down at you. Yeah. And she just sort of, uh, keeps an eye, uh, warily at, on your <laughs> weapons. In your hands, she's just, blindfolded. Huh? She's blindfolded. Oh, she's blindfolded. How she, okay. How is she yeah. walking down this tunnel with the blindfold on, bro? We're guiding her. We have yeah, to guide we're her. leading her. Avarisos uh, would want to stay. Would want to stay close to her. He wants to. Anyway, she's, she's not responding. Yeah. Right. I understand why you mm. acted <laughs> as you have. Forsooth, <laughs> with such vast wealth at your fingertips, how could you do otherwise? But. Seen from another point of view, how could we do otherwise? But we have no animosity towards you, no hatred. You have done as anyone would, and this is not something that must be forgiven. What must be forgiven is my unforgivable treatment of you, pushing you down the tunnel. Mr. Galliano, I, I don't have time for your guilty conscience. Just not l- at all. Let, let me go, or, or can we keep moving? <laughs> we shall do both, my dear Estelle. Both in all good time. First, we must pass through these tunnels. How well do you know your way down here? I, I, not with the blindfold on. I couldn't really tell you. Marvelous, perfect. We shall leave it on for now. Very good. <laughs> Ask her if she knows Garalad, man. Sure. Uh, well, I don't know if I want to do that because we don't want her to know where we're going because we are separating from her in the not too distant future, and I do not want to actually bring up Garalad. Uh, why why do you ask her? That's where we're going. Why don't you ask her if her uh, dungeon entrance at the uh, Broken Head, where it where it where it exits into or enters into? Yes, it is that's in a good the tunnel. Idea. My dear Estelle. If you would but get, bear with us just a few more meters, we are passing through <laughs> somewhat dangerous territory in these tunnels, but it is my belief that in the not-too-distant future you will have rejoined the mighty Kronos. For is it not true that your own estate connects with these very tunnels? It does it, yes. And I believe we shall, we shall remove your blindfold, and I believe that you will see a tunnel that I think if I am not mistaken, connects directly with the tunnels to your your stable, is it? Are you allowing me to go there? We do not have any animosity, as I said. You are, will be shortly free to go. The money in your pack, yours. Your weapons, yours. Our friendship, hopefully, yours. But... But bear with us a little longer till we get to that point. Very well. Shall we then? We shall. Okay, so you you move on. Yes, this will give her time to kind of cogitate on what I've said. Okay, and then they all died in the spider trap. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you move Sorry, much John. lower and much more stealthily towards the southeast, and you go through those cramped uh, warrens down there. Um, uh, you reach that T intersection where you know that you heard chittering rats. You also do continue to hear them uh, when you pass by there again. <laughs> when you get to the part where it widens out, where you remember that you actually found two of Garalad's traps, right at that point, 
um, it is uh, now uh, uh, a thing happens that you don't have to worry about at all. And that is okay. at uh, 920. Um, and then you're going to carefully move around the traps, which are exposed at this point. And let's see. Uh, one, two. Uh, one, two. Okay. It should be more like 10 o'clock when we get to there, I think. Because it was 920 when we entered the triangle room. Yeah, I know, but you're now you're moving slowly. So now you're moving two right, squares. So now you're moving two squares per turn. Right, but didn't you just say it'd be nine twenty when we get to the trap room? Uh, I'm sorry, not nine twenty. Um, nine uh, fifty. Sorry, nine fifty. Fine. Yeah, okay. I got marks on my thing that are confusing me. Um, my marks are good though. Okay, so okay by the time okay, so right before uh, so as you're moving on that passageway, that rough passageway east, you hear that booming rushing sound from above you right that you were you were associated with what was most likely the river and then you reach that t intersection you remember at this uh the last time you were here this is where you saw those uh or you heard those two voices which you pegged to be um two of the members of the five fingers that were right. uh attempting to sort of squish their way down a very very narrow passageway from the north um uh, in your direction and you use like a shadow play sort of thing to scare them off and back. Um, and that was your, the basis of your assumption for why you think that there, um, that leads to the secret entrance back to the broken head. So you are at that point and don't mind me. Um, okay. And it is at that point where it is now 10 20 AM. And yeah. Okay. Okay, boy, typing. Um, so this is the point where uh, we want to remove Estelle's blindfold and ask, does this look at all familiar, fair Estelle? She looks She looks around blearily she, uh, in the light of uh, Avarius' uh, holy symbol. She's like, I have no idea where we are. And she, you see her like, um, and she's looking around like suspiciously, and all the all the goblins are like looking up at her, like, eh. <laughs> you know. Um, well, and there, she, boy. Settle she, down. She Settle crinkles, down. she crinkles her nose. She crinkles her nose a little bit, and uh, you know, all the goblins are just like assuming it's them. You know what I mean? A couple of them are actually like, you know, <laughs> the thing. And she she shakes her head in negation. She's like, no, no. And she uh, and she looks towards the north, and she's like, oh no. Something's coming. Oh, that's not good. Uh, quickly cut her bonds. Okay, she and, uh, uh, she she rubs her wrist and she she looks around uh, for a weapon. There's something coming down the northern corridor, and you can hear you can hear uh, a couple of. Um, let's see here. Give me one second. Gosh, you hear a pair of of uh, heavy. Uh, what's the word? Like a sharp footprint on the on uh, a sharp. Oh, God, like, my words are not like hard heels of boots kind of sound. Uh, sort of, yeah, yeah, like a dunk, dunk, chunk, chunk, chunk. Or like hooves. And you hear like, roo, roo, echoing uh, down from the north. Ruh, ruh. Monkey, <laughs> monkey. Um, yeah, uh, Avaricious. The mace, if you please. <laughs> yeah, Avaricious, uh, uh, I've taken good care of this for you. Please, uh, you know, go ahead. It is yours. You you hear a uh, so, oh she takes so she takes she's like thank you and she grabs the mace. Um, you can see that the uh, when she grabs it it uh, and wields it that it it sort of like flashes <laughs> with light a little bit like a <laughs> uh, uh, as she kind of powers it up a little bit and she looks warily down the northern character uh, down the northern corridor as well you hear a sharp sound of uh metal um gliding across rough stone and somewhere in that northern corridor you can see sparks like a, you know a, a something like dragging a blade across minotaur guys minotaur Forgive me, my lady, but we thought this was the tunnel to the broken head, but perhaps that was a mistake on our part. Uh, These tunnels are riddled with danger, I'm sure. All the adventurers that we send down there tell us many don't return. This is probably uh, why. Well, okay. 
Um, Guys, should we fan out and try and ambush this thing? Uh, yeah. Quick huddle, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ambush mm. seems like a reasonable uh, thing, unless we want to just throw caution into the wind and start heading south east and bring her with us just we got to bring her with us i think but splitting the force up to either side of the tunnel so that we fill him full of goblin arrows as soon as he comes out could be a good thing you hear a bovine call come from the north oh lost ones someone's stumbling around in the dark didn't did we run into this guy before somewhere no, we, we killed two Minotaurs earlier. That's right. They weren't we, great. They weren't great conversationalists, though. That's right. Um, all those favor of combat. Let's. I, I, I say we. Yeah, I say we. Uh, uh, we got the. Uh, we got the position on this guy. Let's take up uh, uh, things that we can ambush him. Okay. All right. Ambush mode. Goblins ten to either side. Put your sacks down. Get your bows out. Chink, chink, chink. And they, they look a little bit worried, but they're like, is it is there only one boat? <clears throat> Do we have we any oil? Goblins. It doesn't matter how many come at us. We will fight them. Do we have any oil? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, we, we have we have a lot of coins, David. We have a lot of coins. We can throw uh, coins at them. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> mug, um, um I'm I'm going I'm, I'm going to call like make it sound like I'm like up the northern hallway. I'm going to be like, oh my god, I think something's coming and I'm hurt. I can't get away fast. <laughs> and I'll, okay. I'll make like a dragging foot sound as I hide behind some goblins. Okay, so the 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 blade uh, on the wall stops and you hear the the cloven hoofed uh, things like speed up like, dush, 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 and then like pieces of stone burst outwards from the northern corridor as this thing just sort of like heaves its bulk through that small area and bursts out and uh, lowers its head and just like flexes as a you know and, and it comes out spittle all over the place leaking nostrils and it's like looking all around with like red eyes huge fuck off horns with two like rings on the end of it um, and a massive battle axe that it just sort of sweeps out in front of it all right, now you guys are ready for it to come. It knows that you guys are there as well. It doesn't understand your position, um, but it's... Uh, can, can I say I'm on the plunger town side of uh, this <laughs> wine? <or something? laughs> I, I, I am all the way past all the goblins on the other side. <laughs> sure, yep. Uh, okay, so uh, declarations. Anyone going to um, block or cast spells? Uh, no. We should have ordered the um, front line of goblins to all block and create a shield wall, TBH, but it's too late. I, I will. I, you're I in will declarations block. right now. You can do That's it. Well, Why don't we do that? Okay. I was Go going to say, I'll block How many? One group. Sorry, Mike. I, I'm willing to block one group, like the hallway for one side or the other. How How wide is the hallway and how many shields in a row can we? Like the hallway is about eight to ten feet because it, it it the one that you're in, but the the one that it's coming through is much narrower. It's probably about six right. feet wide, and it's like barreling through it. So I think we I've should got, let it get into the wine section. Sorry, Ted. If I've got ten goblins on either side, would three goblins in the front rank be able to block protecting the other seven goblins behind them? Sure. You only need one. You only need one because it's adjacent five around so if it's 10 wide i mean this field. big guy can probably push <clears throat> past is what i'm thinking like but i'm the, really the, the, shield, the, shield, the shield rules the shield rules are as such that like he basically has to attack the person blocking it ceases their movement when they are in an adjacent square to the blocker does that make sense yeah. so if it's only eight feet wide by having a single person blocking that Minotaur is going to essentially stop moving in that direction. So if you wanted to have nine, you know, if, if there are sufficiently sure. ranged weapons, if you wanted to have nine goblins on either side with bows and two with shields, or you could have them lined up because they're going to get killed left and right and they can all start blocking. But this round, you know, this round, you only need one on either side. Mm -hmm. If if the scale is is what I understand it to be. <clears throat> well, that, that makes sense in a sort of a, you know, tactical gaming sense i'm thinking more like you know the goblins 
line up behind their brothers. There's three of them. You smash one down. There's still two guys there with shields. Kind of well, thing, even but. to David's okay. point, there's a utility in having more than one blocker in the tunnel because if yeah. one goes down, you still have a blocker. That's right? what I'm thinking. So, so I want three goblins on either side blocking and seven on either side shooting arrows. Okay, I just need to know blocks and spells. So we have we have six six goblins blocking and then no spells, right? Just I'm not I'm not casting a spell. Uh, just okay. just to put, just to, sorry, John. One thing within the round, if the first goblin is killed, we will declare block again. So redundant blocks does nothing for us because there is no action beyond killing that goblin that that, that minotaur is effectively going to engage in. Does that make sense? It's going to run up. It's going to be stopped by the shield block. If it chooses to, it'll attack that goblin. If it kills that goblin, it'll be dead. But then we're going to go to the next round and we're going to declare a block again. Does that make so sense? It has multiple attacks. If it has multiple attacks, that's that's a different issue. Yes, yes. So if it can I gore, more, and I'm attack. pretty sure they have multiple attacks. <clears throat> multiple okay, so okay. Just, I know I this is a new mechanic, but we need to we need to push through this. We haven't rolled initiative yet. So yeah. how how many people yeah. are blocking? Six goblins are blocking. Okay, three. We'll just, we'll just work through it. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, all right. So roll for initiative, please. Go, Ted, go. All right. Um, I had my... Uh... I'm ready. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, Ted. All right. Uh <laughs> So yeah, so so the goblins basically uh, uh, stand stand firm. It comes roaring through and sweeps with its axe, um, and uh, we'll say that it, that goes first. So one goblin takes it and uh, basically uh, just rams right into its shield. Uh, he goes uh, flying backwards a little bit, um, and then the the minotaur swings its head around. Just it tries to like pick up like running the bulls of Pamplona style, just gore this one goblin right in the nuts and pick him up bodily. Um, and, uh, it, uh, it, it basically cracks right into its, uh, into that goblin shield. Um, I'm going to, yeah. Okay. So we have it where the block rating is like three for these, for these shields. I guess we'll leave it as that for now. I just feel like goblin mercenaries were a bunch of mooks anyway, should probably have that block rating. Like, like basically like their shields are gone, but whatever. Um, uh, okay. So. That's that, and it stops moving in the middle of the corridor, and it uh, is your guy's turn. Oh, wait. No, it can... Uh, and it attempts to bite. Okay, so it also attempts to bite a guy. He puts up his shield, so... Okay. I'm already seeing problems with the system. <laughs> I'm already seeing problems. Okay, so uh, basically it's a tracking fucking nightmare for me is what it is. So, but moving on. Let's... Uh, so it used all three of its attacks, and... So th three of the goblins have two more block rating, and three of the goblins have three more of their, block, have, have their full block rating. So let's, uh, your turn. Go ahead. Okay. All right. On Ted's uh, command, unleash hell. I command it. Let there be many arrows filling the air. Um, you want me to roll like 14d20, John? Or no, I do not. Do? Definitely do not roll that many dice. We learned our lesson from that. <laughs> Just, um, well, you, I was wondering. I you I, realized, the, I realized I was muted. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. The goblins are attacking uh, first. Uh, well, missile would happen before spellcasting or melee, um, and I'm not really prepared to go jumping in front of my blocking goblins to fight that guy hand to hand. So I say missile arrows. Yeah, let's pepper him with missile. Okay. Uh, and did I, maybe did I give you the? Yeah. Did I give you the um, goblin stats before? Not really. Just we know their no. strength eleven is all. Okay. Mm. Um, just just a quick. I was muted. Yeah. Else, so I didn't realize. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you concentrated all three of those attacks on a single goblin, the shield would be shattered, John. For what it's worth. Yeah, I know. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have. I think it's reasonable. Well, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, okay. Sorry, not prepared. Not prepared. Okay. No worries. Do you want to pause there or something, John? No, it's fine. All okay. right, so you're going to roll. Um, so how many goblins are attacking with missiles? 14. 14? 1, 4. 14. Uh, you know what? I'm already kind of exhausted with this combat. I think with um, 14 <laughs> goblins that um, I think the um, one minotaur will probably go down. Uh, so we're going to call it a day and say that they pepper him with arrows and he hits the ground. Oh, dead. And a turn goes by. All right. Anything oh, okay. else you want to do? Uh, stand atop the corpse and claim victory. 
<laughs> yes. Search him. <laughs> yeah, search him. There you go. Good thinking, Darius. <laughs> you take the thatch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not lifting that. <laughs> okay. Um, no, at least sorry, we have John. something to talk about for the detox today, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. A second. Da, 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 uh... Okay, let me roll some numbers here real quick. Mm -hmm. some numbers. I think my basement is haunted. I'm just, I'm just, there's something back there. Hold on, it's like I'll be back. <laughs> okay, he has I'm nothing on him. Mike. Nothing. Nothing on him. Uh, nice. Just, just thatch, huh? Just thatch. All right. Uh, Holy cow. Moving on. Yeah, the goblins right there. So, so the goblins are like super. They're all. They're blood. The kid is in all black pajamas, sneaking around in the back, plugging his in his Nintendo. So the blood. <laughs> so there's blood. There's blood on the ground. The Minotaur is on the ground, um, and you are at that juncture where you know. Well, you assume that there is some somewhere up there. There is a back entrance to the broken head, but a, go a Minotaur right. just came down from there. So. Okay. And didn't well, it sound like he was talking to somebody else? Like, didn't it sound no. like he had a buddy up there? No. Oh, he was calling out to us. us. He he heard uh -huh. us. Yeah, he was just talking to us. Right. Well done, lads. Excellent. Keep up the good work. I shall tell the king of your bravery in battle against this mighty foe. You probably ought to take one of his horns as a trophy for your lord. They devout. They hop upon the minotaur like a school of piranha. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, while they're doing this, guys, we need to huddle and decide what to do here. If we're going to send, yeah. her, send her up there, it's obviously dangerous. Or if we're going to take her with us, I thought we could. I thought we could send her up. Yeah, it seems think, pretty. Think, uh, it's kind of up to her if she's willing to go yes. up there. I think. I think the question. The question, Estelle, uh, unfortunately, is: uh, Would you rather come with us? Through certain danger, danger, or go alone back the way we came through uncertain danger, or go north, or go north. Your, but I, I don't think she wants, probably doesn't want to go that way. She said that's oh. not familiar. I mean, yeah, she'd be well, lost. May not have come this far. This this yeah. seemed to be like beyond the region that the five finger guys had, yeah. you know, explored previously. So it might be kind of a ways. Sure, are, she says. Are but you are you letting me go anywhere I want? Yes. Estelle, we, our relationship with you has been unquestionably damaged, and we wish to do what we can to repair it. You are free. You wish to come with us? You may. You wish to go north? You may. She has no desire to go with you, but she, uh, she, she, she whispers <laughs> out a faint um, prayer to uh, Tychius, thanking both her God for saving her life, and to you, uh, she wishes her, the blessings of Tychius upon you all for your forbearance. Um, and she uh, basically disappears into the dark uh, back the way that you came. Interesting. Oh, no. uh, it's, it's, uh, I, I think that we um, one thing we want to definitely like let her know. And I think we I think we mentioned it before uh, in the last uh, 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 last episode. Um, but um, Avaricious would remind her, please, please, please be careful with uh with old Kras up there because i can't you know i do not know your arrangement with him i know that you asked him to stop us but um he, he uh, i i am afraid that you might be in great danger with him so please please be careful i am in friend. great danger with you have no worry about me also does she know that we you guys collapsed the tunnel behind her she was blindfolded the whole time where she would have end up, you're going to find her skeleton scratching <laughs> out that of rocks with her. You let her well, she would have heard us. She's keeping Looking all of her map. gear, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. she's free to go. I'm just being clear, right? Like, you're yeah. not stopping her. You're not chatting with her. You're just being like, whatever, we're going. Like, you're good. And she's taking off. Yeah. You guys want to give Darius, like, five minutes? Like, you guys just keep going, and I'll catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so she's gone. I mean, okay, so um, moving on. Okay. okay, so Estelle is gone. So you continue down towards the southeast, um, moving still carefully, yes? 
Yes. I think we should rush again. It's a straight quarter. Uh, um, yeah, that straight quarter. Let's go faster. Okay. Uh, so that, what did I say? Five squares per turn. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And as we approach that 15 foot drop, we need to slow down and approach that cavern cautiously. Okay. So what I'm going to say is after, um, considering that you're going to, when you sort of see that's about to open up, you sort of slow down again. Um, uh, I'm going to say that's going to take two turns total yeah. to get to the ledge there. Um, yeah. And you've traversed a, quite a quite a big distance. So let's see. You, right. Okay. So this is that cave that you know, like led, uh, that was right before the entrance to Plunger Town. Oh, let me, it's not showing there on Miro. Um, has the beautiful flow stone forms around it, right? And they're looking out over a ledge uh, onto the cave below. And this is where it, and you had left it there actually. Um, there uh, on the tunnel that leads westward from here, which you have not explored, um, which is also up on a ledge. At the base of that, there was a four foot tall marble statue of a whippet, like a dog. Um, oh, that's right. And also against that wall was a five foot tall bronze statue of the god Taw. Um, leaned against that wall, um, both of them showing signs of moisture and tarnish. And at their feet were the de decomposed remains of a wooden crate. Um, and uh, there was a, some scattering of solid eye as well there, but you also, you took all that much yeah. de de decayed detritus. Um, very, very old, like really ancient, uh, especially the the remnants of the crate and the, the detritus lying around. Yeah. Um, that definitely did not seem to be Garelad's property at all, right? Like this stuff looks really old. Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you saw that there was the, the passageway that leads down, um, and out is actually on the floor level of the cavern. Um, right. do you stop uh, at any point here to do anything or are you going to keep going down? Uh, does anything look different from last time we were here? I mean, the description sounds the same, but, uh, it, it is all the same like actually, the... just the way you left it. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, so down you go. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, so down you go to the tunnels and now it starts to, uh, well, it's still gradual and it takes you a while, but it goes down about 200 feet down the plateau. Um, and that takes you about another two turns. So at the point where we're about to switch over to the Plunger Town map, it is now 1110 AM. Okay. Right. And let us zoom out and switch over to the left there and get yourself some fancy Plunger Town goodness. Um, yeah, map. Ooh, look at that map. That's such a good map. It is a good looking map. Don't make them like that no more. And okay. let's show the viewers the real deal. There it is. Oh, do, do we want to take viewer. our do we want to take our first break before we jump into Plunger Town? Uh it is actually that time. A perfect, a really perfect good time. Idea. Uh yeah, we will you, be David. right back. Okay, we are back. Bladder's empty, beer's full. All right, so the AV Club um, and their goblins have basically descended over 200 feet through winding tunnels, and they know from past experience that at this point, it actually empties in uh, from... Uh, there is a, a point in the floor that's about uh, four feet in diameter that you know exits out into a ceiling in a former robing room of the Priests of Thoth back in Plunger Town. Last time you were here, um, you were very, very careful. And uh, I think it was Gorand, actually, at that point, who heard and smelled uh, waiting baboons down there. Um, and uh, you were very, very careful. I think it was like invisibility or something like that. Something cool happened down there. So um, you're at that same point again. There is darkness beyond in that hole below yeah. you. I think All right. Mort should sneak up and, and scope it out, move up silently. Unless you've got another idea, Matt. Well, um, there are a couple of things that uh, we have on the table that we can use, my friends. Um, one is, um, I, with some of my magics, I can tell if Gerlad is down here or not, or at least if he is within a certain range. Um, I did bring, so he brought locate object, thinking maybe we might use that on uh, Oddswallop's armor, but we could also use it. He seen, had a good uh, view of Gerlad's staff, for example. Right, like he could cast locate object on that to get an idea if uh, you know if he's around. Right, 
um, similar, right. or we could do that on something that we've seen uh, Cisco carry, although I can't remember anything off the top of my head. Um, uh, we don't have silence anymore, so we can't cast that. Um, but um, another thing that he will offer in our little huddle is after you peek and see what we can do, um, he can send off some of his uh, snakes as decoys. We can have the snakes go off in one direction so that there's some movement if we need to. I just want everybody mm -hmm. to know that's on the case. And um, uh, also uh, recall that you know, if we want to go at top speed, we can drop 20 Solidi and put the rest on uh, uh, Miso's disc. And if we do that, then we're all at uh, 120 and the cost to us is 20 Solidi. What a marvelous investment. And or we drop is like two hundred three torches or something like that, and we don't have to drop any Solidi. No, I mean we've we've already we've already like gotten lean, right? Like we're already traveling very lean. I don't think anybody wants to give up anything else. But that's just something that's available for us to choose if we want. Mike. So, and I'm sorry I missed the planning call. We drop down into this room. Are we going down through his throne room and then around like the big square thing to get to Plunger Town, or are we investigating another venue to go down there? The, the current plan is Plunger Town, um, but the the secret door route is our is our backup. So I would say we go to that door that leads into the throne room, and we'll know right away if it's a terrible idea. If the throne room's full of Garalad and his minions worshiping him or whatever, we just head for the secret door and get the well, that. Might, that might be an argument for the uh, locate object spell. If we know that he's there, we don't go that way. You don't even go in there. These squares are 10 feet. I yes, believe they're 10 foot squares. Yeah. And you, the range on your spell is what? 100, I think. I think it's 120. Let me look it up. For 120, me. probably. Yeah. So you should, you, I don't know if you forgot, but when you spotted Cisco there, you remember that Gangrene spoke up and said that whenever he was on watch at the top of the pyramid, that he saw Garalad and some other guy and Cisco moving mm -hmm. from the Eastern Boulevard across the pathway of the pyramid towards yes. the tower. Right. We, and he saw that he saw that the previous night. So it'd be somewhat of a miracle for Garalad to be any, anywhere near. Right. This, our assumption is he is not, but he's surprised us before. <laughs> here's, here's what I would propose. I don't think we even try to go to the pyramid. I totally forgot about the secret door. I think if our goal is to do anything in Plunger Town in Garelad's absence, aka bring the glass orb down, liberate the apes, etc., we're better hoofing it just laterally across and taking the secret door path to the Debouchemont, making as little attention drawn to us as possible, which is not super possible with all their coins, but you know, as much right. as we can, so it's the shortest distance, and then coming back if we want to fuck shit up, right? Like coming back with our gear. Go ahead, Ted. So the the downside, and it's big to that plan, is it totally reveals the whole route to the goblins. There is zero chance they will not tell the king. That's true. Oh, yeah, know. and that is right. that is yeah. our worst case scenario route. That is, okay. I think we need to try for Plunger Town. Okay. Uh, the, you mean the, the pyramid? The pyramid, right? Going straight. Uh, yeah, we, we mean pyramid, right. not Plunger Town. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now there's a there's a likelihood that the, they have a retinue of guards right there, but we'll find out. One other question, and then I think we should just go. Well, do okay. we want to try this door over here or any other like more? Yes, more thank you. That's what I was trying thing. to point out there as well. I saw that door, and this looks like a T intersection that we don't know where it goes, although it probably right. links up over Making here. Approaches. But if this door to the south intersects there, that might actually be the fastest way. I think it's I mean, I'm willing to trust you around here somewhere, like because the the baboons were eating like garbage in a room somewhere over here too, right? Why don't yeah. what how, well, why don't we use a little bit of our invisibility sneaky stuff? You go down there and see what you hear. That's a great idea. Ooh, Darius, why don't you go assassinate Tresty? Okay, you're at the top of the hole. What do you do? All right, um, Mort's going to move up to the hole and listen and look in infravision and try and see if there's anything in the room below. 
Okay. We're completely uh, uh, hiding hiding the light so that it's not shining down. Yeah, well, uh, well it's more creeps ahead of the party kind of thing. It takes a turn. Um, you do not see any heat signatures and you hear nothing. Okay. I'll I'll pass the word back to Darius if he's going to do this invisible drop thing, but there's no light down there, right? There's no light, man. So, no like, light. what am I going to actually go do? I'm going to have to take light with me. Right. You know? Uh, we can... Why don't we uh, uh, give uh, Mort one of the rings, if Ghost you're willing, three. Mort? Yeah, willing. Um, uh, I will go blind. will make you invisible. Okay. And you can scout a little bit. Use your goblin ears. Okay, fine. Okay, and? So Mort will drop through the hole okay. invisibly with the ring. Okay. Uh, there so, should be some one of the goblins at the top of the roll, hole with a rope ready to haul me out of there in the worst case. Right. Okay. So I don't remember what you did with the knotted rope that Garalad was using at that point. I can't really remember, but whatever. Um, oh, uh, it might still be there. I don't remember. You you drop you drop down. Um, and last time you were facing a whole bunch of, of baboons, and I think Cisco was there as well. Um, uh, but this time it is completely empty. There is the vague smell of baboons that you kind of associate with this entire level. Um, but there is no sign of them. Um, there are still the wooden pegs are on all the walls. There is, um, uh, there's that crude image of a ape like creature wearing a strange robe scrawled on the Eastern wall, which is, doesn't fit with the rest of, you know, Thothian imagery of baboons. Um, and, uh, and you drop down upon that little pile of rubble that was, um, that Carol had made to make this hole out of here. Um, other than that, uh, you don't see it, you know, it looks pretty much the same. All right. It just occurred to me that we also can't go the secret route because we don't have the Thothian pendants, so we couldn't get past. Oh, no, Yost has one. Oh, yeah. Yost has always had one. Yeah, All we right. have it covered a couple Let's, ways. But south we go, then go go. Okay. So Mort will move to um, that. That he's going to move south. Uh, you know, thirty feet to that. Um, I need to. I should get a token or something here, huh? Just use the party uh, token. I'm, fine, I'll use the party token. I'm going to move to there and look around into that room off to the west where we fought the uh, baboons. Right. Um, okay. So, hold on. Yeah, so uh, last time you were approaching from the other end, and that's when you heard like uh, baboons sort of rummaging through there. Um, you, as you kind of approach from this end and you kind of look into the room, you can see that there is uh, trash and detritus just scattered everywhere. Uh, bones, awful, dung, all that kind of stuff is is mm -hmm. scattered around. Uh, any paint that was here has been flaked off the walls. And um, you definitely see like, a there's like a bunch of streaks, uh, like, you know, like brown, black, and red streaks as well on the on the floor. And yes, it does bring to mind more the, um, the uh, the fact that this is where one of your companions died. Trusty was oh, killed yeah. here. I'm um, actually in the corridor outside, like right outside that to the south. Yeah, no, I was uh, over here. Yeah, yeah. All right. If there are no baboons in there, I'm going to move. Come on, to here, and scope out the hallway. Okay. Um, and you're what are you moving at? Ninety. Uh, yes, I guess so. Okay, we'll you should have left your large sack up there, though, or whatever. I don't carry a sack. I only have a backpack. Okay, because I got shield and sword in hand. Okay, so uh, once again, it's it's eerily quiet. Uh, you know, definitely at this point, last time you were exploring, you definitely heard baboons around this point. Um, there right. is uh, once again, there's sort of just heap trash and stuff like that. The vague smell of of baboon, um, and you know, somewhere to the west is that laboratory, which you assumed with isocritus um, yeah. but, uh, but you don't, uh, you're just going off of your infravision and everything looks cold and dark. Okay. I don't see anything moving and no heat sources in the hallway. Nope. Okay. Um, all right. In order to maintain silence, I'm going to move to this point, which the door is ajar, and see what I can see in that room without touching or moving anything. Okay. Um, the, yeah, okay, so looking in there, you see that it definitely was a place where uh, baboons used to be, but they are no longer here. Uh, there's junk everywhere. 
Um, the room is filthy. Uh, the frescoes are long gone. Then there's piles of trash, fur, and excrement that are littered on the floor. It's wholly disgusting. Um, the room itself is uh, exactly 30 feet east to west and 10 feet north to south. And you are entering right in the middle of the room. It's almost like a little storage closet or something. Matt, can you move your token there, please? <laughs> so like this, John? Yep. Okay, so that is probably not the exit that I want. Um, right. Um, moving there, up to here. You, you can see, uh, even before you move up to there, that there is a pulsating light coming distantly from the far west past evil that room. Evil box. Evil box. <laughs> I want to do with evil box. That's for David. You can have that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Darius. Darius maybe has gone evil. I don't know. He's offering to kill a stall in our <laughs> Avaricious right. was looking at so that staff mighty there, hard. In that crossroads there, the walls are completely bare stone and inlaid in the floor is a um, is colored glass that's set in the uh, cardinal compass points. That's why you had that drawn there. Um, right. There is a ibis-shaped iron lever set into the west wall. I do not activate the lever that was all Gorn's uh naked exploration from back oh, in the day right. yeah 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 baby a study in dwarven news it's a beast man yeah great episode um all right uh, i'm going to move oops that's not let's try it again i'm gonna move to here another turn goes by and i'm gonna be looking through those doorways right so once again eerily quiet the smell of baboons is thick, but you think it might just be from all the trash that you've seen. Um, the hallway, there is a doorway to the south, and then you saw that uh, you noted, uh, this was Gordon again, I believe, that there was a stairways leading down into darkness. Yeah. That's for later. We should go exploring heard baboons down yeah, let's there. Let's check it out. <laughs> okay. I'm going to move to here, uh, trying to avoid touching the doorways as much as possible. Uh, okay. So, yeah, uh, creaking through that doorway just a little bit, you were able to peer down. This is as far as Gorn got, I believe. You saw that narrow corridor going yeah. down to the south, but didn't explore it. And then um, you can see that the uh, passageway goes for one, two, three. Uh, well, it goes at least 60 feet east. Uh, east. Um, and one, two, three, four. After 30 feet, there is a opening to the south. And after 50 feet, there is another opening to the south. 10 foot wide openings? Yeah, 10 foot wide, yeah. Like archways. Oop, 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 oop. You can so, also see in uh, your dark here? you can also see in your dark vision that uh one, two, three. No, af af after 30 feet. So in the corridor. Not so like, 30 feet from me, but 30, 30 feet of corridor. Yeah, 30 feet of corridor. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, directly in front of you on the south southern wall is a mirror. Um, there are also mirrors in the four, there's also f mirrors in the four corners of the cardinal room. And there were mirrors yeah. um, all along, like, you know, there's scattered mirrors. There's also mirrors in this corridor as well, just so you know. I'm not going to give you the exact locations, but they're, they're there. All right, I want to proceed down this corridor far enough to determine whether it connects up with the the corridor corridor we've labeled danger door. Okay. Oh wait. If, uh, if I can make that connection, I'm going to turn around and go go back. Cuz that's what I'll, that's my mission, right? Yeah, connect north the when you're there to assure that that there isn't a passageway going straight north. Yeah, well. if, he, if there is one, that would be marvelous, but uh we'll or, see how it goes. Uh, yeah. Or if there's something that goes like, you know, just to the east of that, so that that one little doorway, you know, right? Right. Sure, okay, sure. So more continuing eastward, um, you're not going down that small corridor, is that right? The skinny five foot one? No. Yeah. Although okay, if so, I look, glance down it and see heat signatures, then my plan changes. Yeah, you do not. So as you pass by the archways, though, you can see that both enter into the same room. This room is quite large, also filled with excrement and fur and nastiness where uh, baboons probably recently were, but no longer are. The entire room is 50 feet east to west by 20 feet north to south. And um, each of those openings are 10 feet in from their east and west sides, respectively. 
getting a real LV426 uh, vibe right Thank now. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the room, the room is... The, hold, hold on. Where are all hold, the monkeys, Hold man? on. The room abuts the corridor, Ted. There is no... Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Okay, so... And what was the dimensions? 50 by... 20 feet. Oh, 50 by 20? Yeah. Oh. That's not much of a room. So like that. Everybody's a critic. Yep. Okay. So uh, full of trash. Yep. All and right. For I move up. Excrement and it's gross and it smells bad and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, if I'm up to here at some point, I should see whether I'm connecting up. A, another guess. Another turn passes. Um, so you can see that the corridor uh, so if you're at the end of the of the room that you entered in and you start there, there's another 40 feet of corridor going to the east before it turns a corner. Right. So that'll be... So it, it does connect, in other words. Yeah. And there's nothing to the north? Nothing to the north. Okay. This is the point where I'm going to turn around. Well, no. You know what? I'll go up to here and look down the corridor because I ought to know if there's something going on down there. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, so there's nothing going on down there, but you do recognize the corridor. This yeah. um, was a corridor you don't like to remember because your former employer met his doom right. in this corridor uh, so, or, or soon after that corridor. Um, and right near you towards the east is a... Um, let me see if you can actually see it. Give me one second. Uh, let's see. This is the room where Mort became a man. Oh, it's, it's, tr it's true. <laughs> Squeegee became a Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, so what's interesting is that where you have that arrow there, Ted, um, is, yeah. a, is a, it looks like regular corridor. But you drew that there because from a distance, whenever you were in the middle of that combat with things coming from both directions, all that kind of stuff, you were sure that you saw um, uh, one of the apes pull, I think it was Anaximander, through that door. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. It's a secret door or something like that, I seem to recall. Does the corridor continue east from where I'm standing? No. Or is that a turn? Nope. It's a turn. It's, it's a, a turn. It's, it's a, a turn. turn. Yeah. Okay. Oh, ha, ha, okay. Oh, dang it. I keep... Uh... Okay. All right. That pretty much answers the question, I think, guys. So, John, I'm going to work my... I don't see any heat signatures, so I'm going to work my way back to the, the, the tunnel and uh, whisper that I think we can proceed and start bringing people down. Okay, that's going to take another three turns. Yeah. So I've been gone like an hour. Okay, so it is now about 12.20 um, p.m. Uh, what, time okay, did you guys. Guys, what time did you guys wake up? We haven't been to sleep yet. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you woke we, up at midnight. Did we leave at, we, at around midnight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're good for like another um, four hours or so. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I will whisper up, you know, the code, the call sign, and uh, the cat walks at midnight. And um, start bringing people down. Okay. Do, and, do we want once we get down? Do we want to do the uh, the disc trick, or do we want to stay max loaded at ninety? It's either it's either or. I don't think it's something we can do short notice because everyone's got to like divest themselves of coin and da 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 da. So I sort of feel like the status of what we're seeing down here is that we don't need to do that. We are not racing to get to the plunger. I'd like to keep it in case one of you all get murked. I need to throw your body on it at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So I say we just go slow. Fair enough. Do you guys want me to do my locate object on something of significant danger? Like, like the plunger? Know, Garilad staff. The plunger. What if we get there and the plunger is gone? I think you have to save do it, it for the plunger. 
I think well, it's you too do far it away. immediately before. Oh, well, when we're in, within somewhat within range, I think you need to do it because if it's not there, if we know it's not there, we know there's an ambush waiting for us basically, right? Um, or yeah, something, be. right? So it takes you a turn for everyone to get down because of all the goblins and everything like that. The goblins are loving the whole thing. They're, they they love the sense of danger and they're pretty pumped up because they just basically devoured that minotaur. Um, the, <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they kind of, uh, drop down in and they're they're ready to go now um they've also never been here before so they're like whoa now um, we, we trust you both you said there's a quick run right to the south we're running hard to the south eddie van halen starts playing. <laughs> <laughs> um yes my friends follow me carefully and cautiously and we shall yet see the goblin court Okay, so um, as you guys march forward, you you kind of add up how long it's taken Mort, and when he reports back what he saw and everything like that, you realize that you have never gone this long in this uh, part of the dungeon without hearing or seeing baboons. Something's really creepy. Did they have a civil war, we think? Well, we'll figure that out once we, uh, we get to safety, maybe. Mm -hmm. Which direction do you go? We trace uh, more steps down to that corridor. And we will go straight to what we have labeled as room two, I think. Okay. Unless unless uh, Mysophase wants to go visit the god chair and fry his brain a little bit. I don't I don't want to say this out loud, but uh, there's there's a non zero chance that they invaded Goblin Town. <laughs> through the plunger pyramid <laughs> and they're all gone because all of our friends are dead in the Dubouche font. <laughs> okay, so to get to the um you can safely get to the uh that T intersection near room 2. Um okay. Uh and it takes you about four it takes four turns to get to there. So now it's about okay. one one ten in the afternoon. Now, right. um you've got the mirrors lining you the hallway, you know the god phone is to the west. Um and uh, you know, uh, just beyond the door to your, I guess it would be your left, um, uh, is the way to the pyramid. Now, straight ahead of you, you see the shaft of light from the near midday sun is like um, right. uh, coming down in the in the well of light. And as you kind of, as your eyes are naturally drawn towards that natural source of light, basically competing with uh, Avariciosus' holy symbol. You see a large form move across it, like uh, like like in front of it, but like at a distance because it's a huge room, right? Um, right. And and you hear like a doosh, doosh, kind of moving around in there, like a black, like a like a, a shadowed form. I think we will be very very quiet. Yeah, I, I actually got to say I'm somewhat relieved that yeah, there's a something bit. down here, and it's not like you know. A xenomorph that looks like a forearm baboon. <laughs> should we should we do the locate object now since we're within yes. our feet? Yep. If if you want to do that, Matt, it's up to for you. For the plunger, for the plunger, I just think it's sure that because otherwise, yeah, otherwise we'd be trapped down there. Um, yeah, he will do that. Uh, he has a clear image of of the plunger. We had it for a while. We know exactly what it looks like. Um, he's going to cast locate object on that plunger to make sure it's where we left it on the top of the pyramid. What's the range? Uh, One hundred and twenty. Okay. Um, uh, yes. So it pings in that exactly where you think it is. Ding. Sweet. Okay. Nice. All right. It is there, more my more friends. Quietly open the door to room two. And. Okay. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What? Okay. I do not. Okay. This might be something where having Darius go ahead that's invisible might be useful, right? There's enough light in that corridor from like the sunburst. I can sneak out there, yep. open there's, the door, and then like the, look, at least get a little bit of light in the room and see if there's anything. To, going to on. be clear, it is a it is a strong shaft of sunlight that is very very localized in the center of the well of light, right? So you're 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 able to pinpoint because it's a, it's light source, but it's not illuminating anything in the corridor that you're in. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you guys are in. Total I thought there'd darkness. be enough residual light that I'd at least be able to see my hand in front of my face, kind of thing. Uh, you would when it passes, you know, in front of that light beam. You also are like in the presence of Avaricio's rage now, which is completely illuminating everything around you. Yeah, oh, fair okay. enough. But Darius, yeah, I think um, 
having you go first does make some sense if you right. want to like you know assassinate the door okay i would John, also I give will... a, maybe give a listen maybe yeah, yeah i'll right. activate that's the cloak for the second time okay how long does it last three turns three turns okay so all of us are in the corridor that goes north south there just off that T intersection, I think, while Mike's character moves up into the east west corridor. Okay, so Mort, you relay back what you saw in the well of light. Darius, when you turn the corner and you're invisible and you get up to that door and you're listening, you can see that the thing in the well of light has stopped and its back is toward you. And you recognize this particular great four armed ape by its stooped. Actually, Darius, you wouldn't know what the hell this is. Um, you you be uh -huh. uh, you be scared to death, uh, but uh, uh, I guess Mort would you could probably relay it back that uh, by based upon the stooped shoulder, um, that Stresco. it looks like it's probably Trefco. Trefco. Yep, that's what I figured. This was um, the man. This was the one that was actually dragging the tall, top knotted prisoner. Yeah, and who apologized to you for busting down the door that you are literally at right now. Is the oh. door then busted down still? Uh, yes, it is actually. Well, it's um, it looks like it's been hastily repaired, but it's basically basic, uh, like barely hanging on hinges. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, realizing that it will probably make noise if I open it, like if it's like hanging, I'm gonna kind of lift it up and then swing it open a little bit. Okay. Uh, Matt, we don't have a turn to listen, so I'm just gonna go. Okay. Um. Uh, actually, I probably should have told you whenever you approached the door um, that there was a, a, a continual light that was kind of cracking through the seams of that mm -hmm. door, um, and which lines up with what you, once again, Darius has no idea. Uh, but Darius, you were surprised to see when you walk in the room that the, the room is mit, uh, mit, lat, lit magically with continual light and the floor has a um, living mosaic on it. Um, the walls are covered with pale yellow tiles. The ceiling is painted yellow as well. Plasters hanging in shards. A very different looking um, room than the rest of the place, as uh, as um, Morton and Avarisios would remember. And Yost. Sweet. All right. Okay. So is the room? So if the room's clear, and the door's open, we can all make a. We can like if Mort's like watching around the edge to see if Tresco is facing the opposite way, he can sort of indicate to people to run through, right? Yeah, you without could, being yeah. seen. You could, yeah, yeah. Let's do it that way, and then Mort will follow up the rear. Okay. So as you pass into the room, you could swear Mort and Evaricio says you recognize the form of Trefco there. That he he seems like his shoulders are sort of hunched, and he's sort of d dragging all four of his arms along the ground, and he lets out like a, a long like, <sighs> like a big despondent sigh, as he starts to oh. head up as he heads up like up the north corridor. All right. Somebody made Tresco sad. Dude. I know. I want to go. I, I want to leave there, but... now. I want to figure out what's going oh, on. Buddy, I want to go talk to him. <laughs> John, we you can... tempter. <laughs> we can come back when we don't have 80,000 gold pieces on us. Uh, guys, no. quick question. <laughs> quick question. Quick question before we potentially, although it doesn't sound like. Well, I don't know. Uh, did we ever try the push down trick on this pyramid like I did on the other side of it that brought me into the hidden chamber? I thought we did. Not, I we, can't remember. I, I feel like we did. I don't, uh, I, I, don't I don't I don't think we did because we it, whenever we were here trying it, it, we, it was like dire circumstances. I think so. It might be worth trying because if there's any loot to be had, now's the time to get it before we go to the Goblins. <laughs> If you guys, if that's not too much of a, a, a classic David hijinks. <laughs> I mean, we, we, can't, yeah, we, can't carry, we can't carry anything more, David. I, I know, I know. But yeah. I just well, we could. We my could there. Knowledge is power, you know. But uh, I'm down. Up to you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we got, you we got two yay. <laughs> uh, how about this? How about this? How about um, we get most of the gold on the other side of the plunger? And if you want, you know, Yost and Mort can stay behind with you and, and, and we can try it. I'm game. Oh, so okay. Sounds like a party split again. <laughs> um, but if, if you know, the other half of the party is in the safe space, it's not so bad, right? That's true. 
Let's just go. Come on. I'm Let's down go. for doing it, but maybe what we do is we come back and we do it then. Yeah, right? it's like super easy to come back and we want to see what's up with Tresco anyway. I'm right back down here. I didn't mean to All mire right. something. Let's go. No, I love it though. I, it's a great idea. Now I'm okay, sad so that we it, don't know what's happening. I'm going to say it takes another turn to wind your way through the corridor there and exit out of the continued light and you end up in the pyramid room itself. Uh, once again, this pyramid's about 40 feet tall. It stairs cut into it. Um, it's made out of uh, granite. The walls around the room itself are decorated with frescoes of humans rising up from the ground and shedding their robes, beards, and canes. Um, there are wall sconces in the wall, but it is unlit except for Avaricios' holy symbol. Um, and you make your way up, and there is a small triangle on the top made of lapis lazuli, and there is a three-inch hole which the plunger is... Uh, rising out of you depress so it we can just like we just have to all if, if memory serves from previously we just have to be sort of holding hands kind of thing right mm -hmm. so everybody can kind of just climb onto the pyramid standing on the steps and as long as we're touching the person in front and behind us we should be okay right right or we can we can also do it in in groups that fit around we've done it before right no, we we've done this before, Matt. We yeah. like when we were running through here the last time. Everyone was just daisy chaining in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, but not with like twenty eight people are not going to fit at the top of that at the time. Right. We might just have to go yeah. in in like three shifts. Well, we'll see. There's only one way to find out. Okay. John, so, goblins swarm the pyramid and grip each other firmly. Okay, and you wink out and uh, and you reappear in the green the top of the green misted um, room. In the day bush, in the day bush level, you can hear faintly the sounds of goblins um, working and laughing. Um, some shouted clanging and banging, and as well as we move over to the day bush level. Um, oh my God, we made it! Okay, okay. So I, the, when, I am I am shocked. <laughs> So none of the goblins actually like like to go into this room. They've basically heard about it. So the goblins do realize where they are, though. And so they scramble down and all semblance of you like ordering them around um, sort of fades as they realize that they're home. Right. Um, but they've got they've they've got their coins and everything. So um, I assume that you sort of follow them as they sort of make a break for the main debouche. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we so need to go do with we, them. Do we want to take everything with us, or do we want to put some more of our stuff in our our hidey hole first, or do we want to stay with them? I say uh, unload in the hidey <laughs> hole. Right. Are we letting them keep the gold they're carrying? I think that there is merit in giving some percentage to the Goblin King as an offering for the alliance, right? Uh, or so for information or number of things. However, I think there is also merit not letting them see us use the hidey hall in the way that we use it so right. maybe so maybe mort goes with the goblins and the rest of us toss everything in our bags in the yeah. stash for now i got an idea sure. so mort's gonna give up i can't do it but mort surely can really piercing whistle mm -hmm. boy lads and try and get the 20 goblins attention they come screeching to a halt at the base of the pyramid they peer they peer back up to you like conan coming out with the head of thulsa doom <laughs> you got, it's it's you you're, <clears throat> gentlemen you're going to like this part now you are i know carrying a considerable amount of wealth a portion of that is for your king a portion of that is for you yes even mm -hmm. louder more, now more, if you more. pile all the gold up we shall bring a tribute to the king, and each of you shall get, what do you think, lads? Two coins? Uh, they're, they're, they're sure they're good with it. All right. What do you guys think? Two coins per goblin as a reward for their hard work? Sounds good. And we, had, yeah, we want to make them happy. All they had to do is beat up a, a, a poor cleric that fell down a hole. <laughs> they, beat, they, <laughs> yeah, they, got, they got a free on, meal. <laughs> Steak tartare. Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of they, 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 and not a lot of we, we, we. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the idea here, John, is that they completely unload their backpacks. All the gold is here. We will deal with the gold. Uh, I'm promising treasure to the king. And they will go away with, with two coins each. So that's 40 gold. There are 40 solidi that we give to them as a reward for their hard work. Okay, so mark it and off. They do not take the whole backpack away where we can't control it anymore. 
Okay, so yeah, they unload all their now? packs at the base of the pyramid. You give them their pay. They're super psyched. They sort of like, they're in a bit of a daze of happiness because they're looking around and like clapping each other's on the back and they're like counting their numbers. And they are actually shocked that, considering what they've just been through, that none of them have died. Um, uh, in fact, none of them have even been really hurt uh, for that matter. Yeah, Ted. I have another idea. Once they're once they're done celebrating, I have one more thing. Uh huh. Which is, um, uh, Avaricious, reach into it's your pockets and please, if you would, give me the holy red paint. Uh, well, first we have to to empty all of this stuff out. It's kind of full right now. Oh. It. <laughs> You have reached the, the limits of my great magic. Right. You have to dump it all out oh, first. Right. Yeah, and then... I was going to, I was going to put like a fit keen mark on their foreheads or something like that, but, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll use blood. That's right. I'll just cut my own arm and I'll put a little blood mark on each of their foreheads. Yes. Nice. Yes. That's, really? Nice. Nice. That's our yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take, take a hit point of damage. Hard. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they love it. They're they're yeah, they, they get all get marked and you give them their coins and they're like, You must see the king. You must see the king. Come, come, come. Can we have a few moments to collect ourselves and make ourselves presentable for your king? We shall Perhaps. go see Bottleneck and prepare for your arrival. Precisely. Send Bottleneck to us shortly. Give us some time. No, we'll right. go to Bottleneck. Yeah, they, yeah. Don't have him come here. They they, yeah, they scamper off. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you're going to use this special sequence of the plunger, and you're going to hide all your shit in the special secret chamber, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Well, is our is our old stuff still there? <laughs> Everything's still there. Okay. okay. So, um, whatever whatever you've got on you, you can deposit. Um, well, up to you. I mean, you you have everything you had minus forty. Uh, is that what you said? Forty forty, solid die. Yeah. So yeah. what? Well, was also the, um... also minus the stuff that we gave to Estelle. Right. Okay. So, oh, yeah. So, how much gold did Estelle get? Uh, we, uh, she had uh, one twenty in her pack. Okay, so we're so missing one hundred and sixty. She, she made out very well. She did. She did. Okay. What's so, what's the total? total what's the total minus one sixty? Uh, yeah, five thousand one hundred ninety. Okay. So, uh, and you're going to deposit all of it, correct? You're going to divest yourself of all of it into this chamber. I think we should this all keep a, one slot's worth so that we can just have some spending cash, right? Well, two questions. This is an important juncture. Sorry, John, not to make this too complicated. Uh, I want to go to the Goblin King as quickly as possible, guys. We do know that there's a relatively empty plunger town, and we have the glass orb we're looking at right now. If there's ever going to be an opportunity in which we can install the glass orb theoretically unless i'm just miring us in a fucking alien trap but right like this is probably the only time the question is do we think we can do it reasonably without delaying the goblin king probably if we can do it an hour or two but we can't like rest first i don't think it's like now uh, we can't we rest first david but don't forget also that john already telegraphed that we only about an hour ago that we only had like another four hours before we're like in the exhaustion level that's right. we literally have to be like, go run, install, hope we don't die, which is a big risk without the goblin help. Uh, and I'm just throwing I, it out there so we're aware of it because this is yeah. the one time Gary Laz not there. It's a great idea, but um, you have uh, really you have some time. Down. It is uh, if it's going to take a turn to divest yourself of the gold um, while you're in that secret chamber, and right now it is one thirty in the afternoon, and you are going to start taking penalties at four p.m. So you have, uh, what is that, two and a half hours? And I could put the glass thing on a floating disc is the key. I can literally just put the ball on a disc. God. It's so, tempting, so, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we're we're just so cool. why, why don't we, we're we actually at our second break ready. point, so why don't you guys discuss it yeah. while we uh, drop okay. out for just a second, and we will be right back. Yeah. All right, we are back. So they have successfully completed the heist in full. Um, there is 5,190 Solidi that is completely hidden from all eyes with only your knowledge of how to get to it. It is as safe as it ever will be. How much do we want to give the king? And did we grab that little chest that held 30 Solidi? Would that be an appropriate gift for the king? Uh, we did We did not carry that chest. Okay. It was, it was too bulky for what it could carry. It was going to weigh us down. Okay. Ted, I think you might be being just a little scampy. I think we got to give him like the equivalent of like 10,000 GP. 
Which is I like agree. a thousand you go Zolodai, big. right? A hundred Zolodai for the Goblin King? No. Estelle, Estelle can't get more than the Goblin King, guys. Right. That's wild. No, <laughs> we're trying to private Zolodai. Yeah. A thousand GP, right? A hundred Zolodai is a thousand, thousand GP. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we should here's, give him here's, a thousand. I would, I would give I would give a thousand or two thousand sold I honestly. Now here's why. Feel free to disagree. Okay. I mean, sorry, I cut you off, Matt. I didn't mean to. Um, no, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, we mm-hmm. want a good relationship. Maybe we don't reveal that we're giving all of that at once. I don't know. Let's go get a feel for things. But we are entering into an alliance where we are ourselves incredibly precarious, right? And potentially bringing as many problems as good things with an alliance to a king like this. And so war chests is a great incentive, right, for whatever burden we might bring as people who have pissed off a dragon, <laughs> maybe Cronus and Instel, maybe whoever else that we can't predict for. Or, you know, you know, apes that might be knocking on the door at any point. So that's my that's my that's a very concise way of saying i think more is good but go ahead matt what do you what do you think guys think about this i have have two ideas one thing is that i think the goblin king deserves a fresh and well-rested party with levels shooting out of the every orifice and pore where we look great and powerful and strong and clean and fresh for the king that's number one the second thing is I wonder, maybe this might be a little bit meta if we bring a, a token gift because we don't want to be overburdened, right? We bring a, a token of, you know, one sack of gold and then see how the, you know, bring the offer of more. I'm, a, I'm up to giving him thousands because if we can cement that relationship with him first, then when we bring him that gold, it'll be you know, theoretically be safe and we might get XP for that gold that we give him. Um, right. Like if we can, if we can use a little bit of a little bit to establish some kind of safe haven, then the gold becomes, you know, we get the credit for the gold and then I kind of don't care what we do with it. Here's my only concern about that is that there's 20 goblins plus bottleneck that know that we hauled like 20 backpacks and sacks out of gold and if we show up with one bag and we're like here you go king he's gonna be like for real i'm just saying that, that, that's a like that's a down payment like well promise I know, of, imagine, of much imagine like a line of goblins chirping down to his like throne room and just dumping the gold like in front of him i i think that yes. i think it's better to make a big statement <laughs> first I know where you're go coming big, from. Maybe. Go big, baby. Go big. I love experience okay. points as much as the next guy, but I think when we're establishing this relationship, establishing our value right up front is going to be like more important to our longevity. I also know? want to say, Mike, Mike, who loves, loves a level, saying yeah. something like this is, <laughs> is a pretty powerful <laughs> statement coming from Mike. That, that, is, that, is, that is very, I very persuasive. Matt, I do well, think course, we should work to figure it out. Go okay. ahead. We also have the um, the big fish statue that provides fresh, endless water that might make a dramatic gift to a king. <laughs> I mean, yes, some gold. Um, I, I worry. I mean, so, yeah, Mike's idea of a large initial dump of gold, like we bring this to you. We wish to be your allies. <clears throat> he wonders how much more we have right like they gave me thousands of gold they must have thousands more we bring a smaller amount and you know he asks for more in the future we can give more we have not given all a pile of it away right out the lead but we did give him this one mighty gift of fresh water for his people for example we have other stuff we could give too i was just looking through the treasure tracker you know and there's various jewelry items and uh you know statuettes and things that um we've taken um that are you know not magic they're just valuable there's the you know gold gold statue that yost hauled back stuff like that so there's there's gift opportunities here something that yes something that looks really cool yeah right. and we still have we never check to make sure that the the plugged up fish is still actually spouting water we should probably check that before we give that as a present make sure it's still do. working i'm thirsty right. john is it yeah, still spouting right. water uh yeah, have me check you a sec. Okay. 
I mean, you, and y'all at some point would have pl- unplugged the plug and plugged it back in just to check. Yeah. He's a curious guy. Mm-hmm. What are you saying, um, David? It's unfortunate because me and Mike and, and, and Ted and Matt are really split down the center here. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to appeal to the same concern, aka you have some, you might have more, et cetera, et cetera. Or. Yeah. Whether it be the showmanship, which I fully agree, like these are goblins, they respect huge heaps of money, parades of violence, right? These, this is this, this is this is this is all we gave them. We gave them like several casks of whiskey just to come down here, and they adored us, right? It is showy. I mean, let's think full Hobbit style, like just mm-hmm. you know, that's awesome, right? That by itself and narratively is fun to me. Second, we're going to a king in the heart of his area. With thousands of goblins around us, and if we give a small sack of gold, and they know they are. They might all kill us yeah. straight up. Boom, yeah. goodbye. Right? Like we're assuming that we are. I mean, we know we have like a good relationship with these guys, but we don't really have any any leverage or safety or anything once we go yeah. down there. And yeah. giving an insult to a king in front yeah. of all of his court might be worthy of death. <laughs> if I were a goblin, you know what I mean. I I have an idea. Here's here. Maybe this is like splitting the difference. We each carry a significant gift. Every member of our party that goes down, we either have a sack of gold or the big statue or or something to present to him. That way we're all covered. We all give something. Maybe one. Maybe we each give a sack of coins. Maybe some of us have the sack of coins and one of us carries the fish. But. That way we each bring something and it's us, right? It's one to one. I have a thing. You have a thing. We all have a gift to place before the king. That seems. I'm just going to make one more point and leaning like to David's point. That's awesome. And we should absolutely do that. And Solidai are only useful if we can manage to get them back to Gosterwick. So for me giving away 10, like a thousand Solidai of our 5,000 is like a minimal payment, man. It's, it feels like it's a minimal payment, and yet it's going to take 10 goblins carrying it down into the room and emptying the sacks out and give them the fish. That's cool. Throw some gems in there, like whatever else you guys want to do. Um, but they know that we just robbed a dragon of his horde. They all went with us to do that. They are well aware of how much gold we took. They know. And if we show up with like literally like some gems and a fish and all the rest of that, and here's a hundred gold solidi, we're gonna end up as dinner. Like we're gonna end no, up as dinner. Was, I'm not taking Darius down there. I'm gonna take no, one of my are. other characters down. <laughs> we also we also are not bringing them the weapons shipment. We told them we'd bring them, which we haven't had time. So we're, to do we're, yet. we're 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 bailing on that in the in the short term. And they know we left survivors, including a person they've already been in a hot war with. Because yeah. they were fighting the wine darks on the plateau after the W trick. And and had to, they were sending scouts off to all right, had a, probably some sense of who Cronus and Estelle were. I don't know for certain, but like at least the wine darks, right? They just watched us release that person who they wanted to kill. Okay, I don't know. And the point is, again, I'm like, I'm seeing this as a political barter chip, and I have no sense of the scope of the Goblin King's power. So obviously, I might be over investing, but I'd rather over than under invest in a scenario where this might be the first time in the entire campaign that we have someone on our side. Yeah. Literally the first. I think it's right? worth the money, guys. guys. It's worth the money, yeah, guys. I, and I, I think you're I, I don't think you're understanding the 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 scope of how much I'm agreeing with you. If we each carry something of that value, we have easily a thousand. Avaricious in his sack has five hundred of them all by himself. Like we've got that much. If we each carry one big thing, whether it's a, a, a sack full of solidi or something else that looks like a good present for a king, either one. Like we can choose. We can pick sure. and we can do that. If it's a thousand, we have we have a thousand, and we still have space. We, we're fine. Okay, so we can do that. If, we, I'm not, if we're if we're okay with a thousand, then why don't we do the showmanship thing that Mike said? And have the goblins bring the gold down, and all of us have a have a have a token gift to use your idea, which is a very like fun story thing to do, right? Like I think that's a really fun, interesting thing to do that will make us really seem cool, <laughs> for lack of a better description. I like it. Mort is, is shaking his head. He says, gentlemen, gentlemen, these are cave goblins. They will be happy with a fish. 
Oh. They will be. Oh. They know. Oh. They will be. My, <laughs> oh, my surface is great, great grandfather. Uh, Miso Marx is really. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What will the king spend this gold that you give him on? Not not not. He Dude, he's gonna be like, go buy me like 50 war axes or you know, armory. Here's some gold, and we're gonna be like, eh, thank I you. Wanna, I, I would say another thing worth considering whether this is actual this because this is a good thought that Matt had, but whether this is actionable or not, right? The key to us having a XP turn in is that we have a connected economy and the ability to build out the economy in either direction is probably predicated on a lot of capital, right? And so bringing a lot of the capital to the Goblin King or spending our own capital on building infrastructure or connections for the Goblin King or whatever that may look like may be how we build the safe haven that is actually functional to us without needing the broken head or without needing, I, mean, I don't know that, that anyone would do dealings with goblins. So this is obviously a stretch, but like without knowing whether we can get anything from the set form or anything else like that. Right. If goblins are just throwing money around, people are going to be like, well, I love money. <laughs> Maybe I don't mind. Can we, can we put this goblins vote, so much? Guys, can we put this to a vote? Cause I really want to go find out if the goblins on top of the pyramid yeah. saw yeah. a dragon attack a bunch of mercenaries today. Okay. The problem is, we right. to do what <laughs> but yeah. so what you, you guys are saying is, is a a a sum total of value of ten thousand gold? Yes. Yes. So one thousand coins. Coins or other items? Sure. Coins. I, I don't think it matters. Like, I, I would rather keep like, a magic item than a thousand coin. The coin is no use to me other than XP mm -hmm. and, and and value and 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 so and the, some of these items we have we haven't brought in a way that's XP exchangeable for instance the fort fountain anyway so it has the same value as that I'd rather have a fountain that spews infinite water than having extra coins exactly right. if we <laughs> set right. up our own right. safe haven man we're gonna need water right Thank like you. I mean that's a okay that's a a thousand. Thing. Uh, so that would be a hundred or oh, sorry a thousand solidi. For the goblin tribute. Okay, okay, so are you taking that thousand right now, or yes? Why don't we? Can why we don't we? Why don't we sleep? <clears throat> why don't we sleep and then come get it? You haven't even Leave been to the debouche yet. You're still standing in the middle of the pyramid room. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> let's go rest. Find out what happened with the dragon. We'll come back and get the get the gold for the king and go meet him in the morning. Right. I'm, sure. I'm we, exhausted. We may not go straight to the king. We we, we should go see uh, bottleneck. And then make an arrangement for an audience, but we need to sleep. Yes, that's so what I'm asking. Okay. Are you Let's taking anything? Room, please. Are you taking anything out of the of the secret treasure room? No, it should all stay in the stash. For okay, now. so you head back out of the pyramid room, and the uh, magic mouths were again um, as you uh, as you pass by and you make your way past um, and north into the debouche. Now the debouche is a hive of activity at this point. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. First of all, standing and uh, lounging in front of the statue of Thoth, the back end of it, sort of facing the southern entrance, surrounded by a couple of little goblins that she is dicing with, is Samantha the Red. Um, and she looks up uh, as you as you see her, and you could see like a look of like relief flood her face <laughs> as as a smile also <laughs> spreads across her face, and she stands up and casually sort of she's like uh, she's talks to the goblin. She's like, "Gentlemen, if you don't don't mind," and everyone whirls their heads around. They're like, "Ah, oh, it's them!" And she's and she kind of comes up to you and like she says really softly, "She goes, thank God you're back." <laughs> 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 and she um, and yes, she she says everything is okay here. There is uh, they are all very excited. Some of them have started to come back down from their guard uh, from their guard watch up top, and they ha they have news. You're going to want to talk to them. Um, and she and she kind of points over and she waves them over, and you see all the rest of your companions. Companions. The whole AV club are also um, hanging out. Um, your uh, the other PCs tell you that they have um, given them very rudimentary, like like the barest necessities. But they have given over the um, the sarcophagus room to the south, which was where the goblin incursion originally happened. Over mm -hmm. to the 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 humans, right? Like the big folk, uh, basically, is where everyone's sort of hanging out. Um, also uh, coming. With like a sort of um, uh, leaning on Harold the Wary's arm is is uh, Hjalti and Harold the Wary as well. Just want to make you guys aware that those guys are there. Um, Hjalti looks um, looks like he's 
healed a little bit, got a little bit more color on his face. Um, and um, he's able to speak normally now. And he, he says, thank you very much for what you did for me. I I cannot, I, I owe you my life for what you have done. Um, and uh, Harold um, uh, uh, looks fairly normal as well. Um, so just be aware that those are, they're not PCs, um, but they are potential retainers. You have made no deals with them. Right now they're just sort of NPCs in the room, um, but they are, uh, you saved both of their lives and got them to a safe space. So they are willing to join the party. Um, if you are willing to like the basic retainer relationship, if you're willing to pay them, um, the, uh, bottleneck is, um, talking to a group of goblins that have just come out of the debouche itself. And those guys are like jumping up and down and, and, uh, uh, squealing goblin at them all excited and all this kind of stuff. And you can see that some of their hands are actually bloody. Like they've like they've been steeped in a little bit of blood or smeared with blood, um, and they have smiles on their faces, and uh, they uh, like as they're, they're excitedly talking to Bottleneck. Bottleneck is like is Adam's apples bobbing up and down, and he sees you guys, and he, you know, he says, "Ah, oh, you are back, excellent." I suppose we may have you to thank for this, and he sort of looks over at his um, excited goblin companions who have come down from up top. Those guys didn't come with us; they're not our goblins. They're no. from, they're from no. The no. What news, uh, bottleneck? Tell us. Um, yes, please. We are very curious what happened in our absence. The goblins like climb over each other to like explain to you. Um, uh, like they basically like run right past bottleneck, and he's just sort of sighs as they kind of. Uh, as <laughs> and they, and they're like, oh, oh. Um, they said it. Uh, they. I'm not going to do their voices, but they give you a scene of absolute horror. Uh, they said that a, a scant few hours ago, the dragon was seen winging about towards the west and then they heard an awful an awful sound and the dragon systematically picked up or was was seen flying with uh struggling oxen that was ripped to shreds in its claws and then its remains doused and rained upon the stairs of the pyramid and then uh in would wing away back towards the west did it again with other oxen and then also brought clutches of men that were careful to have been taken alive in the claws and then ripped in midair and showered the steps of the pyramid with blood as well. Um, and, uh, no. yeah. And they, <laughs> everything's fine. The dragon itself, except for the horrible sounds of the men dying and the oxen lowing as they died as well, uh, was eerily quiet. Did not make a sound in the did not make a sound from its mouth. And then winged away to the southwest after it was done. But they thought the whole thing was unbelievable as they all climbed over their barriers at the top of the pyramid and uh took a shower in the blood of their enemies. Crass crass is that level of mad that only a dad can achieve. Where <laughs> 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 you just go real quiet. And violence is your main language. Like that's not, I, no. They, no, they also report. He's not um, mad. They he's also not report mad. that Lyda, Lyda, who is still up at that up at the top and refused to come down, they kind of uh, view her with a little bit of reverence because she's sort of like touched, right? She's like, you know, the sort of figure of of respect. Um, that uh, they said that the uh, the the little one they call her whispered as it was happening that the great one is sending a message. Is what she kept on repeating over and over yeah. again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm, um, I'm pretty well sure that message is it's cool, guys. It's cool. <laughs> All right, right. The uh, any any news of the broken head? Could they see anything over the horizon? If they, they saw listen? nothing happening over at the broken head. Um, Good. The fires in the watchtowers were still burning the last time they saw them, which was just recently, uh, about six turns ago, and they. Uh, and then also the other group that is here that is sort of, sort of significant group to notice is um, Harab and Larakim and company, that uh, team that you brought back. They are also uh, looking a lot more healthy now that they've been fed and um, and uh, re relaxed and all that kind of good stuff. And they are very keen on returning to like they are the most. If if you guys go to see the king, they're going to go with you. Those are the those are the goblins right. that are going to go with you, basically. Oh, the goblins yeah. that we rescued. Okay, yeah. I was I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah those yeah. guys. Yeah. 
I have one more question, John, which might not be germane to the specific moment, but I'm going to ping because we have basically Watchmen in the pyramid here and there, which is, <laughs> are there any sightings of the Five Fingers or adventuring parties today in the conflict or in recent time that they've been looking? Do we know? So they recently, um, it wasn't today, but it was the day prior, they did spot an adventuring party that did fit the description of the five fingers um, uh, scouting around their usual haunts is the way that the goblins put them in the um, in the western part of Arden Vool. They seem particularly interested in the statues of Arden and Vool and in the lake area. Um, no, but, but they but it didn't strike them as interesting in any way, shape or form. However, they have not seen any sign of them since um, uh, cross okay. cross Onisirus was seen in the air. The uh, what else I was going to say? Um, uh, I should say I, I I misspoke when I said that Harab and company would be going with you. They are going to, um, uh, they're going to leave you to it. They're going to actually leave now to go see the king. Mm -hmm. Um, and but they're going to go the way that you are going to go though. But you guys are going to rest first. So, um, right. but but they are uh, they will prepare the way for for you. Like nice. the Bene Gesserit. Yeah, so they're all, um, Bottleneck is thoroughly, all the goblins are impressed that all 20 of the goblins that you were lent were, uh, got brought back. Um, some of them are jealous that they got some money and they, the goblins like life is cheap. Like they were fully prepared to just like those goblins that lives were over and they didn't really give a shit, right? So they're just like stunned, you know. I will, uh, we uh, our you boys. know, we, we, yes, I promised I will. we would bring them back safely and here they are. Okay, uh, so publicly, uh, publicly we commend their bravery and what stout lads they all are. Nice. They are they are uh, thoroughly pleased. If they could if they could blush, they would. Oop. Uh, before we go to sleep, can I get raucously drunk with several of them? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. I'm going to do my, exactly. My friend, that. we will we will empty many cups together. <laughs> you and I. Yeah, you guys you are all inhabiting. Know what they make alcohol out of. You, you are need to know. you are back in the stable, right? So you um you're actually inhabiting three different spellcasters right now, uh, David. Um, <laughs> well, so, <you> know. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is actually a good place, I think, for the last ten minutes or so. We can uh, do the level ups, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, do you do you want to? I, I, time is a, like a little bit less of a like what time the beginning of the day happens now is sort of like not as much of a thing. Um, I would say by the time like you're ready to, if you said your welcomes and all that stuff and got the briefing, then I'm going to say it's three o'clock. Probably took about an hour and a half or so to kind of get the lowdown. Yeah. Um, that invisibility did wear off, of course, um, Mike. Uh, so at three o'clock, you're ready to bed down, um, but it all depends on if you just kind of want to keep your normal body body clock going, or would you rather just wake up at 11 p.m. and get going? It's time to get on goblin time, guys. Gotta go on goblin Gotta time, go baby. Yeah. The sun, the sun means nothing to the likes of us again. Okay, cool. John, so we will we'll tell them that whenever after we've rested or whatever, we're happy to go see the king, and we have gifts for him, and then be like. We need at least eight hours, but when do you want to leave? And then that's their morning, and we'll go from there. Uh, they're good. Sense. They're good whenever. Like, yeah, okay. so why don't we just go the next morning, guys, so that we're not like constantly trying to sure. do naps. So it's easier on John. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, it doesn't so, matter to me. Like I, I'm just I know that it, like my tracking sheet doesn't. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> it, it'll I make mean, more sense to me. So let's just go tomorrow morning. We'll, we'll eight a.m. Yeah, this, we'll the try and stay up. We'll try yeah. and stay up, and then we'll go to sleep. And you know, we'll have a party with the goblins, and then we'll try and get up at a reasonable time. Okay, so you party hard, and you um, and you sleep really late because you got so drunk on whatever goblin piss um, they are serving you. And um, uh, another, did they, did they drink all of that uh, that uh, fancy brandy that we gave them? Is I'm that sure gone? they probably did. When had no conception <laughs> of how good it was. I mean, goblins <laughs> are known for their restraint. Okay, so this is always a momentous occasion for the uh, for the Arden Vool campaign after 60 episodes. It's the next day, folks. Oh, yeah. It is the 5th <laughs> the fifth of Jelenios. And thanks to our lovely calendar, um, it's a mild day outside. Temperature outside is 56.2 Fahrenheit uh, in the morning with a high of 76.9. Not going to matter for you guys <laughs> for quite some time. Um and uh, should you want to go back out the day, Boosh, the, it's a clear day. So there you go. No precipitation. 90% um, chance of dragon death. 
Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's the fifth of July news. Welcome to the fifth of July news. And we have um, <laughs> level ups. So let's just go around the horn here. Darius, you are level four now. Yes. I'm a uh, level four assassin that has never actually killed anything. And <laughs> you are still in your same bracket. So your saves mm-hmm. don't change. Your AC doesn't change. But you get a hit die. I get a hit die and I get to add one more pip to one of my skills. Uh, okay, cool. I'm ready to roll. Are you ready to roll? Are you ready I'm, to see? I'm ready to see. Oh. oh, I don't see it. You don't see it? No. I rolled a four. I see okay. it. It's a four. Oh, there it is. It finally popped up. Nice. Okay. Okay. Cool. And Good. I have a plus one of my con. Oh, so shoot. Can, can I just point out, especially to Mort, I now have <laughs> 18 hit points as a fourth level assassin. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. I wasn't aware. <laughs> okay. And what are you putting your point in? I'm going to put my point in move silent, which will raise that to three and six. Nice. So okay. I will have a, I have a five and six climb surfaces, one and six hear noise, one and six hide and shadows and a three and six move silent. Kind of an interesting thing here. Uh, I see with hirelings though, at fourth level, you actually have assassins as possible retainers now, which is where you weren't before. So you can start, you can start building your assassins guild, <laughs> the guild master who's never killed. It's kind of cool. Actually. <laughs> I'm gentle. I'm the gentle one. Okay, cool. That is Darius. Welcome to level four. Mizophase is all right. Uh, level two. I'm gonna What's roll your... a D4 for health, and I get one slot and spells. Heck first yeah. Level spells. That is uh, a two. I just so I have a <laughs> eight HP. Everyone. Heck yeah. Eight HP. All right. <laughs> new tank. We have and a new tank. You have um, a. An extra an extra spell slot. Um, don't forget too right. with my house rules that the um, th- th- this is the first time we've actually been able to institute this. If you have like a mentor, someone that can teach you a spell, you could actually gain the additional spell in your spell book. Um, that would be like okay. the like the basic rules of of uh, OSE. So Lara Keem, for instance, would be able to like give you a spell. You know what I mean? Could I get a spell from the Goblin Witch Doctor as well? That's Lara Keem. Lark Lark okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So yes. Could, could that could I do that now? Yeah. Uh yes, we could do that. Let's see. That was let's see. What room was she in? She was in that room. And let's see. Okay. Give me a second. Sorry. No worries. Thank you. Uh, it has to be it has to be a first level spell, obviously. Uh, let's see. I already have read magic shield, magic missile, and floating disc, FYI. Ted, how many hit nope. points do you have? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, Mort normally has 15. He's a little bit wounded right now, but he has, he's a 15 hit point, fifth level goblin. But he's a con eight, except that now he's wearing the uh, the dwarven belt, which gives him a plus one con, which I think moves him out of the minus hit point column. Okay, which so... Uh, Misel phase. Lara Keem is happy now that your mind is open sufficiently, like hers, of course. Um, that she can teach you, uh, what I don't think you have. She can teach you protection from evil. Um, she can teach you shield, or she can teach you ventriloquism. Ugh. You want any one of those? You're muted. You're muted. David. We all know you're going to pick ventri- ventriloquism. Though. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I was going to say I, 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 uh, I need to read it, but yeah, probably ventriloquism. Poe is just so useful with like banishing minions part, but I'll just do ventriloquism because it's fun. Ventriloquism. And remember okay. that we can we, we kind of have that um, for free with Yakin's bones, right? That's true. So ventriloquism for the for the listeners, real quick. I'll read it to you because I brought it up. Uh, the caster may make their voice appear to come from any location or source, e.g. a statue or animal, within range. Then that's a 60 foot, and it's two turns. Cool. Awesome. All right. That will do it for Mizophase and uh, Mort. The big one for Mort. Mort is already kind of high level. Um, yeah, maybe. All right. So not much changes with the sixth level goblin. I get a, I get a hit die. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, so he's wearing the uh, Dwarven belt, John, which I believe means that he has a um, no longer got a minus to his con. So, but does that affect hit points? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't add a con bonus to my HP either. Yeah. Good job, oh. David. So Good. I got, I have, I have, I have 10 HP now. <laughs> okay. More to double digits, it. baby. Go ahead and roll then. You just got a hit die roll. I get a hit die roll. Do I get back hit points that I didn't get from not wearing the belt for five levels? If your Bar- con goes up, John and Ted, then, then you yeah. no longer have the penalty. You would get the five hit points. Yeah. Great. All right. I'm going to roll a D6. All right. Three hit points. Okay. And then if I get the five, because I'm wearing, while I'm wearing the belt, I would have uh, 23 hit points, Mike. Ooh. So the uh, the belt does actually put you into the next bracket for a bonus? Yeah. Doesn't I go to okay. no, no, no modifier. Okay, cool. Um, and then uh, that's amazing. Uh, welcome to sixth level. The same as Avaricio's. Wow, the, the rarefied air. Avaricio's tips his invisible hat to you. Yeah. Um, Mike, I'm pretty friend. crazy considering I started as a retainer. Yeah. And uh, lastly, we have uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, so uh, she gets um, a, a new hit die, and uh, she gets a second, second level spell slot. What level did she go up handy. to? Uh, she's going to be level four. Four. Okay, great. She's level three now, and she'll go up to level four. Sweet. All right. So, yeah, she'll have two first and two second. That's amazing. Uh, and she's still That's in the awesome. same bracket. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, D6 for hit points. Yep. And uh, D6. No whammies. Here we go. Four. Four. Not bad. Right nice. on. She get a con bonus? Uh, she does not. She, is, she has a, a 10 con, so it's just uh, base. Okay. Right on. All right. And then uh, in the morning, um, you guys, uh, we'll do it. We'll do next session, obviously, but um, you can choose your new spells. Um, and uh, that's great. Okay, super. All right. That'll do it, I think, right? We'll Starting a fresh day, and we will go down, down to Goblin Town. Um, you uh, you yes. have to uh, first get to Killick, and then you get to the Goblin King. Is basically the, the only sort of path that they've so- sort of told you about, but um, you will be entering brand new territory um and you'll have to let yes. me know um how you're going to be carrying your um ill-gotten goods um, that you're going to be taking to the goblin king um but they are all very very happy and now that they know like when you wake up and you're like okay let's go see the goblins they are they are so happy about it um and uh, don't forget that um Larkim and uh, Harub and that company have already left after they after Larkim sort of gives um passes or notes over to Miza face um yeah okay that'll do it awesome nice job guys awesome um i think that Oof. i'm going to declare it as another momentous occasion for the uh for the halls of art and campaign that this is the end of delve three Whoa. um and we Whoa. will we will we will move on to delve four starting with the visit Ooh. to the goblins <laughs> um, yeah, we get a bonus level for that completing the delve <laughs> probably not We'll get a nice new uh, color scheme on the thumbnail. Is basically all that means. <laughs> uh, but yeah, new, a new playlist starts, and um, I think this is an appropriate end to that to, to that arc, which was a wild one. Delve three started with crazy. the um, Stel- Delve three started with the Pit of Fire. That's how long ago Delve three started? Oh my god! So the wow. ice chambers and the the lost chambers of Arden, the split party, um, the the heist, everything was all that was all Delve three. Um, a lot that of insane, a lot of crazy stuff. So yeah, congratulations guys. Really well done with the heist. Okay. Um, that'll do it. So don't forget that you guys have been watching 3d six down the line, the most criminally underwatched actual play on the internet. Please do not forget to like, and subscribe and pass along the word. Don't forget that we have a free discord server that you can join and come talk to us. Mm-hmm. And if you want to open up some of the, uh, more rarefied chair channels, feel free to hop on our Patreon. Um, where we have a lot of great supporters. Uh, thank you to our explorers and our delvers. And of course, uh, the greatest thanks go to the highest tier, our conqueror level guys. And I'm going to throw it over to the one and only Mike to <laughs> read out those wonderful people. So I would like to send a special thank you to Matt Mason, Matt Gardner, G Tokyo time, Matt Koenig, 
Terry Barney, Mando NZ, Faisal, James Doig, Robert Valdez, Eric Lawson, Grunt, Andrew Schroker, M.M., Michael Schilling, Stefano DiMaiolo, Underwires, Matt Young, Summon Toast, Adam the DM, Jib Cutter, Scott Yearsley, Mech Jack, Kick Maniac, and Dire Gru. Heck, and yeah, we need a couple more mats in there. I don't know what. There's a lot of mats. On. Yeah, the mat are mats. I've been saving <laughs> up. I, I, mean, I keep meaning to do it. <laughs> never met a mat. They, they, yeah. they grow them in a. Before. They grow them in a game store lab. You know, they sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to all the mats and all the conquerors for your continued support. Um, uh, we love to see it. So thank you so much, everybody, and uh, have a great week. And we will see you next time for Dell Four. Bye now. See everybody. Thank you, John.